Hi guys, this is GSNO.com and I'm here with the AllView P8 Energy, it's a big battery phablet. This one is the locally integrated version of a handset also known as the Johnny Marathon M5, locally integrated by the Romanian company AllView. It's a big battery phablet that uh, has been launched this fall and it's priced at $346. The device comes in black, white or gold and it measures 8.5mm in thickness which means it's quite slim for a 6000 mAh battery handset. It also weighs 212 grams, so quite heavy for a phablet, but once again, there's a big battery inside. In the meantime, it's thinner than the HTC One M9, that measures 9.6 mm in thickness, and thinner than the ASUS Zenfone 2 Laser, that measures 10.8 mm in thickness. In the meantime, it's also 55 grams heavier than the very same HTC One M9. By the way, also 40 grams heavier than the iPhone 6 Plus, in case you're wondering. It has the same length as the ASUS Zenfone 2 Laser, and it's also 6mm shorter than the iPhone 6 Plus. It's a very solid handset with a very solid metal frame on the sides, it offers good grip, it's very well built, and uh, there's a bit of an edge-to-edge -edge illusion here. The actual screen is smaller than the black front panel. Other than that, uh, I have to say that the very most edge of the handset is uh, as thin as 4.75 millimeters. Once again, it has a strong metal frame and the one hand usage is what I would call reasonable here, not bad for a phablet. Okay, so up front we got the earpiece, front camera and sensor, and the notification LED somewhere around here, and then we have the three capacitive buttons below the screen, at the back, there's the main camera, microphone and LED flash, plus the speaker here. This area looks like metal, in fact it's plastic. At the top we find the audio jack and the infrared emitter, while at the bottom we find the micro USB port and uh, another microphone. On the left side we got here a slot, actually a tray. If you use a metal key you'll detach it and there are dual micro SIM slots on this tray. On the right side Another slot for the micro SD card. We got the volume buttons and power button that feel a bit reinforced with metal and offer excellent feedback. Once again, a pretty slim tablet for a 6000 mAh unit. It's very well built, very solid, but heavy. It also offers extra insurance when playing a game and really, really pressing onto the screen. So, well built, solid, and heavy. And uh, this means you have a decent design for a tablet. Now, as far as the hardware is concerned, the screen you're seeing here is a 5.5 incher and uh, it's an AMOLED, OGS technology is on board and we're getting a resolution that's 1280 over 720 pixels, there's also Gorilla Glass 3 protection and the processor is a quad-core MediaTek MT6735, it's a 64-bit unit clocked at 1.3 GHz with Cortex A53 cores and 28 nanometer build process. The same tablet offers the Mali uh, T720 GPU, 2 GB of RAM and 16 GB of storage, as well as a micro SD card slot with support for up to 128 GB extra. Up front, we find the 5 megapixel camera, while at the back, there's a 13 megapixel main shooter. On the connectivity side, there's LTE with a max download speed of 150 mega per second. We got both FDD and TDD LTE. We also have uh, HSDPA with 21.1 uh, mega per second download speeds. This model provides Bluetooth 4.0 support and it also has Wi-Fi 802.11 BGN in 5 GHz frequencies, there's also Wi-Fi Direct, Hotnot, Infrared, Micro USB 2.0, GPS and FM radio. The sensors are as follows, accelerometer, proximity sensor, light sensor and magnetic sensor, and finally the specs list ends with DTS sound. And now it's time to talk about the battery. So, 6000 mAh unit, dual cell lithium polymer, and the charger of this battery is a 5 volt 2000 mAh uh, milliampere unit that offers quick charging. On paper, we are being promised here a battery that offers 750 hours of standby or 1500 minutes of talk time or 4 days of mixed use. They also promise 120 hours of music, 12 hours of games, 23 hours of movies or 20 hours of browsing. The charger is also able to adjust between 12 volts and 1.3 amperes and 5 volts and 2 amperes. 
you're supposed to expect uh, 75 hours of standby or 5 hours of talk time with a mere 10 minute charge. Now in our test that involves HD video playback in a loop with Wi-Fi on and brightness at 200 lux, we achieved a very very impressive 22 hours and 24 minutes, that's the total time, so 22 hours and 24 minutes of HD video playback, which is huge. We beat the Nokia Lumia 1520 and its previous record of 17 hours of playback, the old UP6 Energy with its 12 hours and 9 minutes, and the iPhone 6 Plus with its 12 hours. There is no other phone that scores bigger than this model when it comes to video playback. We also did a PC mark test which simulates continuous usage and we achieved 16 hours and 20 minutes of usage which is simply great. We beat the all UP6 Energy and its 11 hours and 24 minutes, the Asus Zenfone 2 Laser and its 8 hours and 16 minutes and once again there is no other model that can top this one. The charging requires 3 hours and 10 minutes which is not bad at all and you'll be able to reach uh, about 25% battery in 30 minutes. This charging time is uh, above what the Asus Zenfone 2 Laser offers, that one needs 3 hours and 24 minutes to charge, the Xperia Z3 requires 3 hours and a half to charge and the iPhone 6 Plus requires 3 hours and uh, 16 minutes, so longer than this model that offers 3 hours and 10 minutes. Of course, there are phones out there that charge faster, like the Xperia M5, 3 hours and 4 minutes, the Allview X2 Extreme, 2 hours and 44 minutes, or the HTC Desire 120, 2 hours and 57 minutes. And another interesting thing here, we got an accessory, this one, you can connect it to the tablet and turn it into a power bank, so basically you can connect it to an Android tablet or tablet or phone and even to an iPhone using this lightning connector, which is very cool. You can charge two devices at the same time with this power bank phone and my own personal iPhone 5 was charged in 1 hour and 40 minutes by only using up 30% of this behemoth's battery and that's once again simply great, the fact you can use it as a power bank. The previously shown cable is bundled with the phone, just in case you were wondering. Now we're off to the settings and power management. Here you can see the power manager with an estimation of usage and four main modes. None, normal mode that will reduce the performance of the mobile usage. It will use some black backgrounds and uh, do other energy saving things like turn off synchronization, GPS or Bluetooth and reduce the CPU frequency and then there's also the extreme mode that uses a black and white interface and only lets you call people, see the contacts and message them. This totally extends the battery life so right now I'm supposed to get 13 hours with this mode I'm getting about 200 hours which is very impressive. Other things related to power saving, intelligent power saving at night, so less usage of the features during the night time and intelligent memory cleanup, so you can reduce power consumption with a clean background when it comes to the apps. There's also standby intelligent power saving and those are all the features that will reduce your power usage. Once again a fantastic battery and also the power bank feature is pure gold. Now as far as the acoustics are concerned, we got this singular back speaker here. We are also getting DTS, DTS technology and uh, now we also have an intelligent audio amplifier according to all of you. The music app looks like this, feels a bit inspired by MIUI and we got big icons and a minimal interface and in this area here you can find common settings like shake to change song, headset key control, keep screen on and filter stuff and then the equalizer with specialized uh, DTS related options for your headphones, of course the DTS option here, effects volume with modes for all sorts of music genres like rock, heavy metal, jazz, dance or user defined where you can tweak 5 channels of various frequencies to enjoy your own customized experience. Other than that, from what I know you can also tweak the theme and select Bluetooth play if you want an extra option. Now let's actually listen to some tunes and judge the speaker. So here we go.
Okay, now the conclusions. So the experience is quite loud and we get an extra volume feature here. So check this out. So when you reach the maximum volume, there's a little bit of extra in that uh, volume slider to add some extra strength. So loud, extra volume, a bit distortion at the max level, good bass, clear sound, warm sound and no muffling on a flat surface or at least not a big muffling. So that's pretty good I have to say, especially the thing with the stronger sound. And now the headphones. Uh, if you've seen a review of an all view handset before, these are pretty typical headphones. You can see that their body is um, maybe metallic looking, if not made of metal here. I would have to say they're pretty comfy. They have a tangling wire, this elongated remote with a single button and microphone. They sit well in the ear, they go pretty deep. They have excellent noise isolation, good bass, nice high notes, they're crisp and clear and they offer a loud volume. You can connect them here at the top. And thanks to that, thanks to that connection, you can also use those options we couldn't access before. And I mean these ones here. You can select the type of headset, like standard, ears, earphone, headset, soundbox. And finally, play with extra options like DTS focus, true bass, DTS space, definition and center. Okay, and since we're here and since we've attached the headphones, you can also access the FM radio the pretty old school interface and options to search speaker or record fm and that's about it now we're off to the decibel meter test here we go now at the front of the phone we achieved 81.5 decibels while at the back of the phone we achieved 82.6 decibels which is quite good we beat the huawei mate s with its 80.7 decibels at the front or the huawei honor 6 with its 81 decibels also at the front still we scored below the huawei p8 Lite that achieves 82.9 decibels or below the iphone 6 plus with its 83.8 decibels and finally below the allview e2 jump with its 89.6 decibels we're done with these headphones it's time to talk about the display so once again it's an amoled screen a 5.5 incher resolution 1280 over 720 pixels gorilla glass 3 protection and ogs technology the pair we have here is called simply video and let's see what it offers among others it offers a DTS sound resolution which is welcome if you like to hear movies louder and with better dialogue and things like that there's also a pop-up play feature allowing you to minimize the screen and keep doing something else while you're watching the video and now I'm ready to talk about the experience itself so we got those black edges all around the image that don't look quite nice. It's all for the sake of the edge to edge illusion, but it's not pleasant to the eye to see those black edges. And then uh, we got a pretty good brightness, deep blacks, the colors are a bit oversaturated. And I have to say that the contrast would be so so, the phone doesn't exactly behave brilliantly in full sunlight in spite of having good brightness. Viewing angles are also pretty wide, as you can well see and once again colors are oversaturated and uh, one interesting aspect here are certainly the pixels totally interesting usually we deal with RGB striped pixels or with Pentile matrix ones this time it's a very strange setup so it's identical to the um, unique one from the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 it's an RGB stripe setup with uh, big blue pixels with two sub pixels that are green and red you can see the elongated blue pixels, black spaces between them, and the red and green subpixels. Basically, this technology was supposed to increase the lifespan of the panel when Samsung implemented it on the Galaxy Note 2, and if, I'm not surprised if this is the same panel from the Galaxy Note 2, or maybe an evolved version. Anyway, this panel is quite good, it achieves a good brightness of 471 lux units, as measured by our lux meter. We beat the LG G4, that scores 432 lux, the OnePlus 2 that scores 460 lux, and the HTC One M8 that scores 463 lux. We scored a bit below the Galaxy S5 and it's 480 lux, below the Evolio Onyx with its 564 lux, and the iPhone 6 with its 570 lux. Of course, we're getting dedicated uh, settings for the screen. 
here we can find the brightness level, adaptive brightness that can optimize for the available light, economical backlight, font size, wallpaper and cast screen so those are all the options available. An excellent screen aside from the black edges and a bit of oversaturation. Now it's time to talk about the camera. So at the back a 13 megapixel camera with a sensor made by Samsung is the Samsung S5K3 M2. It measures about one third of an inch and it has 1.12 micron pixels. It's an ISO cell sensor that's also been used by the Xiaomi Mi 4C handset. At the front, 5 megapixel shooter here, and all of you claim is that the back camera needs 0.39 seconds to focus and 0.37 seconds to take a picture. The camera app opens up quite fast, I have to say. And here we go. The usual castle is here and it's ready to show us the options. The UI is typical for an all view handset with lollipop. If you've seen one recently, you know what to expect here. So the bulk of the settings is here. We got anti-banding, guidelines, geotagging, countdown and resolution. 13 megapixels in 4 to 3, 10 megapixels in 16 to 9. Capture mode, touch shot or normal, sound and volume keys. Three options for the flash, off, on or auto. And then finally the main capture modes. There's face beauty that offers a series of DIY options like larger eyes, a slimming face, whitening of the face, there's filters and then there's night, professional, magic focus, panorama, normal and take any time in HDR with magic focus allowing you to focus on a certain area and blur the background for example while professional offers an extra series of sub option and then there's pick note that's good for students who wants to take a picture of a blackboard or document. I also have to mention that this pick note mode allows you to create PDFs out of the documents or blackboards that you capture and now let's focus on the professional mode that offers a few sub options that are uh, displayed like this, reminding me of the Nokia Lumia 930. So you can set up the exposure from minus T to plus 3, ISO up to 1600, white balance and shutter speed from uh, one, uh, the 30th part of a second to 14 seconds and then the focus from macro to infinity available here as well. Okay, so those are all the options to play with. Then we go to normal, we switch to video capture and it has its own settings like scene modes night or auto, anti-banding, microphone exposure, white balance and video quality that can be 1080p or 720p or lower resolutions and then uh, features associated to the volume buttons. Okay and back to the photo taking, the actual experience involves a pretty fast focus as you can see for yourself and also a very fluid zoom and when I spoke about the fast focus you can see that the exposure is also uh, set up a bit too enthusiastically usually you have to keep the screen pressed to have those two frames align now with a single press you are forced to move the frames around for exposure and metering which is quite strange because normally phones require you to keep the screen pressed picture taking is quite fast you press it and it's taken so the promises that all you made were delivered now let's see the actual picture here decent level of detail I would say quite good this is a mid-ranger after all it's below $400 and for that I would say it's quite good okay it's time to go to the gallery as usual we have a boatload of pictures here we are okay we start off indoors with a good level of detail here if you start zooming in on the chairs the table and the mirror and then we go outdoors in a very dark shot but then we use HDR and it gets much brighter. I have to say that these shots were taken in early September, so it was fall, it was in the mountains, so that may explain some darkness and the quantity of clouds. So good HDR here. Some shots have the wrong exposure, they're a bit overexposed thanks to the overly enthusiastic exposure frame. Great landscape by the way, if you choose one of these landscape shots, and zoom into it you'll see that the quality of the image remains quite good you can actually see the form factor of the buildings when zooming in which is very impressive the clouds are also rendered okay even uh, flagship phones and even some phones out there that are popular do not take such good landscape shots so keep that in mind okay we also have a selfie here with pretty good skin texture as you can see 
it doesn't whiten the skin too much and also the background looks quite okay and then we got the colors of the fall being very realistic nice texture here of the earth and the leaves good colors good exposure and brightness we also got this dog here excellent texture of the dog's fur no problem with exposure white balance and even though we've taken quite a few shots there is not a single blurry one which is a compliment here lighting was good and uh, white balance and focus also nice an excellent blue for the sky a bit to expose this one but with hdr on the exposure was cancelled nice colors again and then we switched town in an area that was uh, more sunlit the colors remain good if not a bit burnt and the details are simply excellent as you can see here you can keep zooming in and have absolutely no trouble with trouble with spotting the details we even play with magic focus with winnie the pooh's nose and focused on the foreground while the background was a bit blurred speaking of uh, pictures here we're taking a panorama that's kind of small the resolution is uh, 4608 pixels over 1184 pixels and it's also a bit curved once again i will highlight the great colors and the hdr that tends to exaggerate with the exposure a little bit very nice hue of blue and the usual flower markers are here with excellent details good colors and maybe a slight bit of burn every once in a while this is certainly magic focus because the background is blur blurred and the foreground is highlighted. Some more shots of this kind and more indoor shots. And this is the panorama I was talking about with the disappointing resolution and the slightly curved image, but at least it was taken without artifacts. Okay, so the conclusion here is that this is the best all view mid range phone camera we have tested. An excellent camera for the price. The colors are more vivid than the ones of the AllView X2 Extreme. It's about 15% less impressive than the AllView X2 Extreme. It beats the Galaxy S4, for example. It beats the HTC Desire 820. And I even like it better in some conditions than the Sony Xperia M5 that I reviewed recently. Now, as far as the videos go, we have here a camera that can shoot in Full HD not in mp4 but rather in the 3 gpp format that i don't like very much 25 frames per second and 14 uh, mega per second bitrate which is quite good for 3 gpp okay now uh, let's see where we have the videos taken with the camera they're all bundled up here so here we go video number one i have to warn you they're quite windy they're on top of a mountain after all a bit shaky the clarity and quality are okay the colors are also quite good exposure is also decent but once again the wind may be a problem okay and now the other one this one has some exposure problems as you can see it gets dark all of a sudden nice cloud texture nice colors again good clarity Stabilization not so good and that was about it now let's see the other videos okay so now let's see another video like this one here also full HD also 3 GPP and it's the dog you saw pictured before right now we have the Sun that's setting at the back that's why the image is so clear and the colors are so good Good texture, good white balance and good exposure here, also nice focus and the stabilization is also quite good. At one time we will also be zooming into the image. The quality drops a bit and this one is a 720p screen so you may not see the quality drop but on the PC it becomes very clear. Ok enough with the dog, let's go to a more landscape uh, video capture so to say. Like this one here, lots of subjects moving around birds people huge market excellent texture and colors good quality and clarity but also the sun helped here the exposure changed a bit strangely and now we change towns and uh, go here 
Usually when I film in 3GPP, I'm not very happy with the format, with the clarity, with the bitrate. This time it's different. I could even say that this is the best filming in this format I have ever done with the old VP8 Energy or the Johnny Marathon M5. Aside from the exposure thing and the loss of quality when zooming in, sometimes that varies, it's not exactly a um, template for all the captures. This flower is a bit burnt, image quality is ok, and even the stabilization is good here, nice texture, focus and white balance. Once again, the best video filming in the 3GPP format I have ever done so far. And uh, I would have to say that this filming beats about 50% of the Huawei phones I have tested. I tested 6 Huawei phones this year and half of them are beaten by this video capture. And um, I also imagine that the HTC Desire 820 is beaten by this video capture because that phone was underwhelming. The camera is surprisingly good here, especially for a mid-ranger. And if you want to do a bit of editing, you select your shot and then you press here edit and you'll encounter a bunch of filters, crop, straight and rotate and mirror and finally auto color exposure, vignette and a ton of other options. We're totally done with the camera now, we're going to the temperature and after playing the game Riptide GP2 for 15 minutes we achieved 38 degrees Celsius which means there is no overheating here which is always good news. Now as far as the web browser is concerned, let's load gsmdome.com it loaded up pretty fast as you can see, smooth scrolling and the keyboard is the stock lollipop one so no complaints here. Ok, now in the area of phone and connectivity we got a pretty much stock dialer, blacklist, speed dial and settings. We got dual sim slots here and fast GPS, there's no NFC, no Wi-Fi A and no Wi-Fi AC. And uh, there's a dual microphone that helps with the noise cancelling, we have good signal, clear sound and uh, loud volume during calls, so no problems here whatsoever. It's time for the benchmarks, as you can probably predict by now. Ok, so I decided to compare this model to the Huawei Honor 4X, the Philips Xenium i908 and the HTC Desire 820. The battle is done here between a quad-core MediaTek MT6735 plus 2GB of RAM versus a high silicon Kirin 620 plus 2GB of RAM and the MediaTek 6592 plus 2GB of RAM and finally Snapdragon 615 plus 2GB of RAM. Keep in mind this is a 64-bit quad-core phone that's battling 3 octa-core handsets so that's got to count for something. Ok, so first things first, quadrant. 14,234 points, we beat the Huawei Honor 4X which is 5,764 points and uh, we also beat the Philips Xenium i908 13,342 but we got beaten by the HTC Desire 820 with 20,058 points. In uh, Antutu the score was 28,076 which barely beat the Huawei Honor 4X that had 27,251, we got beaten by the Philips Xenium i908 with 31,000 and by the HTC Desire 820 with a similar score. Nanomark should be here somewhere in this maze of screenshots. In Nanomark we scored 59.5 frames per second which is only 0.2 frames superior to a Huawei phone it's below the 61.9 frames of the Philips phone and also a bit below the HTC's 59.9 frames per second. In Velamo, a very very good result in the HTML5 test. We scored 2766 in Chrome as you can see here, which is about 900 points more than the Honor 4X, 600 points more than the Philips phone and 400 points more than the HTC phone. In 3D Mark, we didn't get that good of a result in the Ice Storm Unlimited test, only 5014. Uh, the Honor phone got 300 points more, the Philips phone had 7000 points and the HTC Desire 820 9276. Geekbench 3 is as usual here, 624 in the single core test, 1820 in the multi core test, while the Huawei Honor 4X had the 556 here and 1723 here, the Philips Xenium phone 439 over 2384 and finally HTC Desire 120 666 over 2522. 
Now we go to GFX Bench. Here we scored 8.5 frames per second in the T-Rex off-screen 1080p test, while the Huawei phone had 9.1 frames, the Philips phone 12 frames and the Desire phone 15 frames. We also ran a version of speed test here via Wi-Fi and we registered 25 mega per second in download, 22 in upload, the rivals had 21 and 21 for the Huawei phone, 21 and 22 for the Xenion phone from Philips and 24 and 21 for the HTC Desire handset. Browser tests are also in and I mean browser mark which offered us 637 points while the Huawei Honor 4X 1187, the Philips Xenium i908 1276 and the HTC phone 1461. In Sun Spider we had the 1622, while the Huawei phone 1739, Philips phone 1188 and HTC 1452. And here the lower score is the better. Finally, Base Mark X 6212 points. We got beaten by the rivals, all of them scored around 10,000 points and a few hundreds more. In the Basemark OS 2 test we had 678 points, we beat the Huawei phone by about 200 points. Overall the benchmarks could feel weak unless you are figuring out that you are still comparing a quad-core phone with octa-core phones. We win 3 out of 12 benchmarks and if we exclude the HTC, 4 out of 12 benchmarks. It's quite close to those octa-core models which is a bit of a compliment for the phone and it does not suffer from any kind of lag and it can even support most games that you throw at it. For example, Riptide GP2 was handled quite well on the Johnny Marathon M5 aka the locally integrated AllView P8 Energy. No lag in the interface and no lag in the game as you'll see in a minute now. Nice lighting effects, nice shadows, responsive controls. Nice motion blur. Playing well and looking well and the water is also looking quite nice. So gaming also checks out pretty well. Let's do a stunt. And we can see the splash of water, so I declare ourselves content. Now as far as the OS and UI are concerned, this is Android 5.1 Lollipop with only slight customizations from AllView. Multitasking is still done with this carousel. As you can see we have quite a few apps open here and in spite of that the phone registered no lag, which is impressive. Now if you keep the home screen pressed, you can see the apps area, widgets area, they're quite good looking and effects area if you want to change the effects when uh, passing from one home screen to the other. One of the cutest widgets is this 3D one of the weather and time and place. Okay, the drop down area offers notifications and the shortcuts for the music player, while the swipe up area reminds me of iOS and includes the quick settings here, a few options, brightness slider and four shortcuts that are totally customizable from what I know, torch, fake call, calculator and camera, and then we go to the settings. We got connectivity options, date and time, sound and vibration, notification center that can be customized, control center, also customized, display, security, you can encrypt everything and encrypt files one by one, location, power management and advanced settings. We got the usual smart gestures like smart dial, smart answer, pause alarm or small smart bright screen, black screen gestures which means when the screen is in standby you draw an M to open the music, that's only an example, you can customize all of them. There is also the annoying suspend button which offers extra virtual buttons in case this one, these ones aren't to your liking. Ok, so those are basically the main apps that you'll be playing with here and now we have reached the areas of pre-installed applications. Luckily the phone does not suffer from bloatware which is always good news. We have AllView Self-Care, Bitdefender Mobile Security, Browser, Calculator and Calendar. Then we got Camera, Chameleon. Chameleon is used to turn any image that you see, it can turn it into a wallpaper, it picks the color from the background and creates a new theme and wallpaper for you, pretty much like one of the features on the HTC One M9. Chrome, Clock, Compass, Contacts, Downloads, Drive and Email, Facebook, File Explorer, FM Radio, Gallery, Gmail, Google, Google Plus, Google Settings, Hangouts, Maps. Let's see how the GPS is working. Let's go a bit further here. 
quite nice loading and found us in a jiffy. Okay, then we got messaging, music, notes and PL Smart Remote. As I said before, you have here an infrared emitter next to the audio jack and you're going to use it for this purpose. Change channel, open up all sorts of options, play stuff, connect to your TV set, set top box or other items. You can even go straight to the remote from the lock screen with this shortcut which is kind of cool. Okay, so notes, peel, photos, phone, play books, games, music and newsstand, play store, settings, scene toolkit, sound recorder, system manager. Keeps track of your cache, apps, power, traffic and has an echo mode, system update, theme park, torch, video, voice search, weather, YouTube and that's about it. Those are all the apps so luckily no router. Okay, so it's time for the verdict, it's time for the usual pros and cons. On the pro side, obviously the battery, a huge battery, the best battery on any phone we have ever tested and I do mean ever, it can juice up to devices at the same time. So batteries on the pro side, a very solid case, very resilient and massive and uh, feels nice when gaming to fit such a solid device. Good acoustics, bright screen, a surprisingly good camera, no bloatware and the stock lollipop are all pluses. On the con side, it's a massive phone in the end, it surpasses 200 grams in weight, it has a pretty old CPU based on the 28 nanometer production process. The screen has those black edges that you may not, not like during the video playback. There's a bit of oversaturation on the screen and the camera will rush with its exposure. The device gets a bit hot, quite a bit hot when charging two devices at the same time, but of course you're stressing it quite a bit, so it's expected that it will get hot. Okay, and now it's time for the verdict. As you know, we're not giving grades anymore here at gsmnone.com. The conclusion is that this is a brilliant phone for travelers, for young people who like to backpack across the world, across the continent. Since it offers almost one day of HD video playback, it charges your iPhone, it lets you play games, it takes nice shots, so that's everything you need to travel around. You can find it in some portions of the world, in some countries like the Journey, Marathon and 5 in Romania, it's integrated by AllView as the AllView P8 Energy. Best battery phone, solid camera phone, good multimedia phone, basically no flaws and if I were to give a grade it would be certainly 9 or more than that. So this is a very solid handset, keep in mind best battery phone ever, at least so far, with a 6000 mAh battery inside. This is it from gsnone.com, bye bye.